And one of the first things that strikes even the superficial student is, wait a minute, there's, a, there's at least one missing. Wrong, there's two missing. Where's the tribe of Dan? You see the tribe of Dan there? We got Judah, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Naphtali, Manasseh, Simeon, Levi, Essachar, Zebulun, Joseph, Benjamin. But where's the tribe of Dan? Ain't there. Why? A lot of good reasons I'll come to. But let me show you something else before we're through. There's another tribe missing. Where is the tribe of Ephraim? It's not there either. Well, it is and it isn't. It's hiding, and I'll show you that in a minute. First of all, why not Dan? Where, why isn't Dan here? Well, first of all, you may recall Jacob in his famous prophecies over all 12 tribes in Genesis 49. When he gets to Dan, he speaks of him as a serpent. And uh, that causes the tribe of Dan to take on a symbol. Ahezer, the head of the tribe of Dan, is not too excited about having a serpent be his tribal standard. So he has a serpent in the mouth of an eagle. That's a little more comfortable to him. And that's how the eagle ends up over time becoming the symbol of the tribe of Dan because the serpent ultimately gets dropped. And uh, as they have their tribal standards, the serpent is, is implied by the eagle. But it, it, uh, that's the, anyway, that's the way that goes. Moses says something very strange. It, always, it missed me until relatively recent years. In Moses' prophecy, in Deuteronomy 13, uh, 20, uh, 33, he also prophesies over each of the tribes. And when he gets to Dan, he says, Dan will leap from Bashan. It didn't strike me before because I didn't realize that when Moses' day, that was before Joshua. That was before the land was allocated. And the land was allocated where Dan was down by Benjamin, between Benjamin and the ocean. Couldn't handle it. Dan, of his own accord, goes up north, finds a village called Laish that they take over, and that's where they move to, which is up in the Golan. So indeed, Moses predicts they're going to leap from the Bashan. That's wild. What's that all about? Well, it turns out when you get to Deborah in the, in, in the book of Judges, they have this big fight with Sisera, and she's applauding the tribes that help, and she disparages the prize that didn't, and she disparages Dan, who wouldn't even leave his ships because it was cowardice or whatever. Wait a minute, what's Dan doing in ships? And why is he helping? See, he has spun out his interests away from Israel long before the Assyrian invasion. He has spun out on his own long before. He left the allocated territories, and uh, in Judges 5.17, Deborah highlights the fact that he apparently has become a seafaring tribe, operating out of the coasts. There's evidences that he, uh, that he uh, populated uh, portions of it all through Europe. It's interesting that in, the chron in First Chronicles, the first eight chapters are a detailed genealogy of the twelve tribes, and you'll find that Dan is missing. He is missing. The, the detail. De de you also discover it's no surprise that he's not s protected or sealed uh, in the tribulation, which is why we're getting into this here. Why is he not uh, sealed? In, 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 why is he, it's as if, by the way, if you go through the Bible, you'll discover. It's almost as if the Holy Spirit has a grudge against Dan from the beginning. All the way through the scripture, he seems to get the worst of the prophecies, the worst position in the chron you know, chronologies, and so on. He's the tribe through which idolatry entered the land. And that's, of course, detailed in Leviticus 24 and Judges 18 and elsewhere. He was, his tribe was a leader in apostasy under Rehoboam in 1 Kings 12. When, uh, when Jeroboam is, is rebelling against Rehoboam, Dan is part of the apostasy. He's way up north. He's part. In fact, he's one of the sites of the golden calf. Jeroboam puts a, puts a golden calf there. He's also a leader in the apostasy a hundred years later in 2 Kings chapter 10. He's called the voice of calamity in Jeremiah 4 and Amos 8. And he's cursed in Jeremiah 8, 16. Idolaters have their name to be blotted out according to Deuteronomy 29. This is, I, don't want to, I didn't want to take all of these and drag, us, drag you through them this evening, but I thought this one is important enough. Let's take this one. In Deuteronomy 29, starting at verse 18, M Moses says, Lest there should be among you man or woman or family or what? Or tribe whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, to go and serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. And it come to pass that when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. The Lord will not spare him. 
But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. And the Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel according to all the curses of the covenant that are written in the book of the law. But Dan's got a plateful, huh? And yet we know from Genesis 49 that he will judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. So he does have a destiny despite all this. Dan inherits land in the millennium. So his, his, his deficiency is that he will not be protected during the tribulation. But apparently the ones that do survive will inherit, but they'll do it the hard way, if you will. 